Are you irritated by the canvas texture in your art photos and want to remove it for a smooth finish? Let's break it down. Hey everyone, today I'm going to teach you how to use frequency separation in Photoshop to take out the canvas texture in your art photos. This technique is simple and is a fantastic precursor to using your canvas in a photo bash or when adding elements to create an updated version of your painting. Frequency separation essentially pulls apart details and color, making it easy to smooth rough areas of images without damaging the important aspects. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to see more tips and tutorials like this one. So the first thing you'll wanna do is just open up your artwork. I'm going to use this collaborative custom from Retroviolet Studios. And then you'll duplicate that layer twice by right clicking and selecting duplicate layer. The first one we're going to name color. And the second copy we're going to call detail. Then go ahead and control click to select both of those and put them in a group together. And we'll call that group frequency separation. So go back in and turn off the detail layer, and we're going to select the color layer, then filter, Gaussian blur. And you wanna set the Gaussian blur only enough that you start getting rid of that canvas texture. So as you can see with none, it's pretty textured. You can turn it up a little. So about 2.8, there's no canvas texture in this image. You really don't want it to be too blurry, so about 2.8, 2.9 works best for this project, but it's going to be different for every project. So you'll see when we zoom in, it's got this nice smooth look. Then go ahead and turn detail back on and make sure it's selected. Then go to image, apply image, and we'll select the color layer, which is what we want to be applied to this layer. Now we're going to set the blend mode to subtract. Make sure the opacity is 100, scale is 2, and offset should be 128. So what this does is it's going to remove all the color from the image and leave you with only the details. So hit OK and change the blend mode for the detail layer to linear light. And you've got exactly what you started with. When you turn on and off that group, nothing changes. Those two together should come out exactly like the original image. Now I'll take the detail layer and the mixer brush, and let's set the mixer brush to 10 wet, 75 for load, 10 on mix, and flow will set to 15 for now. And you want to make sure it's not set to pick up color. It's going to give you a clean brush every time. And I'm going to use a soft round brush. So gently on your detail layer, go through and smooth out that canvas texture. This part is really tedious, and you want to make sure you're taking the brush strokes along the strokes on the canvas. Don't mix up too large of an area at once, or you can end up with some not so great results. Just go in the direction of the actual image, like the strokes of the hair here, and slowly but surely we'll pull out this texture. If you have a lot of texture, one quick thing you can do is on the detail layer, select Filter, Camera Raw, Open the Detail tab and turn up the noise reduction just a little bit. You don't want to lose important detail, so be gentle with this. You don't want to pull out any of the important details, but it does help pull back that texture just a little bit.
Now, if you're not familiar with the mixer brush tool, we do have a tutorial that explains all the different bits of the mixer brush, all these different settings up top here, that'll give you a better understanding of what we're actually doing today. So you can change it up a little, maybe turn up the flow to maybe 18, just a little bit. You don't want to turn it up too much or you'll end up really muddling out a lot of the important detail. This image is a little tough because it has a lot of tiny details on the canvas. We want to preserve while we're getting rid of the canvas texture. Sometimes you might feel like you're not getting anywhere. And you can always come over to this group as a whole and turn it on and off. That way you can get a good comparison between the original and the frequency separated layers you're actually working on. And especially for areas like this, you want to make sure that your brush strokes are matching the brush strokes on the canvas. That's going to help you keep from losing details in the artwork that you want to keep around. There's some texture in here that I really like, these brush strokes, and I don't want to take that out. I just want to reduce the canvas texture. If there are really tough areas you're having trouble with, you can sometimes switch over to the color layer and try to smooth it out a little, kind of go back and forth, but be gentle with that because again, you don't want to muddy it up. It's still a painting and you don't want to take out too much of that life but it really depends on what you're actually going for with your final project. This technique can be good for a lot of things. If you're adding digital elements on top, they're not going to have any canvas texture. So taking the canvas texture out of the original artwork is gonna make it easier to blend in new images and new elements. And we'll get into that in another video. Now, depending on how rough your original image actually is, this could take a lot of time, especially if you have a lot of fine details in your painting. If it's a simpler subject, it's going to take a lot less time. Like on these background areas here, without fine details, it's a lot easier to come in and just smooth it all out. And in some of these places, I can use a much larger brush and not worry that I'm ruining the image or muddling details. I can just get straight to removing that canvas texture. Now, as far as the equipment that I'm using today, I've got my Huey on Canvas Pro 24. We have a video going over this tool and all of its features that I'll have linked up in the corner right about now. If you're using a mouse, this is definitely going to be a lot more difficult. But there are a ton of options as far as pen displays and trackpads, which are stylus based, but without a display built in. And we also have a comparison between those two types of tools with recommendations for specific models. And I'll link that right now as well. When I first started doing digital manipulation of my physical artwork, I was only using a mouse and it was really frustrating. It's definitely possible, but after having a chance to explore different stylus tools like the tablets and trackpads, it's hard to imagine going back. It's really so much easier. It takes a lot of stress out, it saves a lot of time, and for a lot of projects, it makes it much easier to go back in and add detail later. One big reason you might want to go through and remove the canvas texture is for art prints. A lot of the times that canvas texture will come out way too defined in a print where it feels like it's the only thing you see. In a high quality photo print, it really distracts from the focus of the artwork with the noisy texture over the whole piece in a way that just looking at a canvas in person doesn't do. And really it doesn't look great. You'll find a lot of artwork that you do this with it's pretty difficult to absolutely remove all the canvas texture from the image, but even smoothing it out a little and reducing it some really helps to bring up the image quality. So let's look at that before and after again, in this area here, and you can see it takes a lot of the focus off that texture and puts the focus back on the artwork and the colors themselves. 
And again, the best way to not distort or blur your details too much is to make sure you're working carefully with all the individual colors, keeping your brush strokes matching the brush strokes on the canvas. Make sure your stylus is working around those details and moving gently around these borders to keep from muddling them together. At some point in the future, I'm gonna make a video about adding canvas texture back into a project, which is great for overlays and added elements to make them naturally match the texture of your canvas and look like they were added directly to the original image. And even though we're reducing the canvas texture here, it still does exist, which is why you'd need to add some texture back in to additional pieces put into the project. And don't forget, depending on different areas of your canvas, you can change your brush size to work on some of these larger parts. If there are less important details that you need to work around, you won't have to worry too much about the quality of your image. But you want to make sure you're still working along the strokes of your image. If you are using some sort of stylus tablet with hotkeys, I think it's important to have, I think it's important to dedicate some of those keys to undo and redo, and maybe brush size, which are those square brackets. And those are settings that are controlled by the software for the tablet itself. You could also change your brush settings at any time by right clicking. <laughs> You can also change your brush settings at any time by right-clicking to pop up this menu. You can change the size, hardness of the brush, the brush shape. But like I said before, I like to use But like I said before, I like to just use a soft round brush for things like this. It makes it a lot easier to stay uniform and avoid any harsh lines that come from using a hard edge brush. Because of the subtlety of what we're doing here, it's possible you might not notice those harsh edges, but it's better to be safe than sorry, and you don't want to waste 30 minutes or a couple hours and get to the end and realize that you've made your image quality really messy with hard edges in your blends. And that goes for any sort of blending, really. So if you get to the end and you realize that some of these details aren't quite as sharp as you'd like them to be, you can always make a new layer on top and paint back in some of those details. 
In a future video, we'll get into what kind of brushes and techniques you'd want to use to do this, to make it blend well and look like it's part of the original image. But for now, I'm just going to add in a tiny bit of that detail just to cover up some of that canvas. And I'll go into depth about that in another video. I'll talk about blend modes, brush settings, etc. that'll work best for adding to the canvas. There will be a lot of tips and tricks for painting on photos of your original artwork and making sure it looks natural. Now when you pull in close near the end, you might notice some tiny spots you missed or where the canvas is still shining through too much, and it's really easy to always go back in and touch that up. So for reference, this is the after, here's the before, and we'll get some nice zoomed in shots of those too. Before and after, and you can see it's just a lot cleaner. You don't have all those reflections off the fiber of the canvas, and those reflections from the lighting are really what you're seeing when you go in and clean it up like we've been doing today. So we've just gotten that smoothed out and it looks a lot better than it did before. You've still got all of your details and lines, but it's not so distracted and noisy from the canvas texture. So what's next? Maybe some clean art prints or a full conversion of your art to a digitally reworked masterpiece? We'll be exploring a lot more of the things that can be done with the photos of your artwork. So make sure you're subscribed, give us a thumbs up, and if there's a topic you want us to get into, hit the comments and tell me what you wanna hear. And of course, until next time, take care of yourself and each other.